Welcome to Energy Insights, your trusted source for exploring the latest developments in the global energy transition. Today, we'll delve into a topic critical for Southeast Asia's future, the Asia Zero Emission Community, or AZEC. This initiative was launched with promises of collaboration and decarbonization across 11 countries in Asia and the Pacific. But is it truly living up to its mission? While AZEC positions itself as a driver for sustainable energy, a closer look reveals reliance on outdated fossil fuel-based technologies like LNG, CCS and ammonia co-firing. These solutions, marketed as stepping stones to a greener future, may be hindering real progress toward renewable energy. So what does Asia really need to achieve its decarbonization goals? In today's episode, we'll dissect the findings of the Asia Zero Emission Community's Fossil Fuel Dependency Report. We'll explore the initiative's key strategies, assess their viability, and outline a roadmap for true decarbonization in Asia. If you're curious about how this region, home to over half of global emissions, can shape the world's climate future, stay tuned. Let's begin by examining AZEC's stated goals. Launched by Japan in 2023, the Asia Zero Emission Community, or AZEC, was introduced with bold ambitions to foster collaboration across Southeast Asia and the Pacific, achieve carbon neutrality, and promote energy security and economic growth. It's a vision that acknowledges the unique challenges faced by developing nations where energy demand is rapidly increasing and fossil fuels have long been the cornerstone of energy systems. The scope is undeniably broad, covering 11 member countries, including some of the world's most dynamic economies. From Indonesia to Vietnam, these nations face the dual challenge of meeting growing energy demands while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. At first glance, it appears to be a much needed platform for uniting regional efforts. However, a closer analysis reveals significant flaws in its approach. The initiative's proposed strategies rely heavily on so-called bridge technologies. These include transitioning from coal to liquefied natural gas, LNG deploying carbon capture, and storage CCS, and incorporating hydrogen and ammonia co-firing into existing infrastructure. These technologies are presented as necessary steps to transition away from coal bridging the gap between high-emission energy sources and renewable alternatives. On paper, this sounds logical, even innovative. But as the report highlights, these solutions have significant limitations that risk undermining AZEC's core objectives. Let's start with LNG. Often marketed as a cleaner alternative to coal, LNG does produce fewer carbon dioxide emissions when burned. However, this narrative fails to account for its life cycle emissions particularly methane leaks during production, transportation, and storage. Methane is a greenhouse gas that is over 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide in the short term. These leaks can make LNG as harmful, or even worse, for the climate than coal. The high infrastructure costs of LNG, such as import terminals and regasification plants, further lock countries into fossil fuel dependency for decades, diverting investments away from renewables. Next, there's Carbon Capture and Storage, or CCS. This technology has been a staple of energy discussions for decades, often heralded as the ultimate solution for industries that are hard to decarbonize. However, the reality is far less promising. CCS remains prohibitively expensive with high capital costs and ongoing operational expenses that make it uncompetitive compared to renewable energy. Moreover, its deployment is still limited to a few pilot projects worldwide, with mixed results at best. The report underscores that relying on CCS as a cornerstone of decarbonization risks delaying the adoption of readily available and cost-effective renewable solutions. Hydrogen and ammonia co-firing are similarly positioned as innovative solutions within AZEX framework. These technologies involve blending hydrogen or ammonia with coal or gas to reduce emissions, while this approach does show some promise, the report highlights a critical flaw. The production of both hydrogen and ammonia often relies on fossil-based inputs. For example, most hydrogen today is derived from natural gas, a process that emits significant greenhouse gases. Similarly, ammonia production is energy-intensive and frequently tied to coal or gas-based energy systems. 
The result? These technologies, while theoretically lower in emissions, are far from carbon neutral and risk perpetuating fossil fuel dependency. Let's dive into the costs of continuing fossil fuel dependency in Asia. The environmental impact is staggering. Coal, oil, and gas dominate the region's energy mix, accounting for more than 70% of electricity generation in key countries. Coal alone contributes significantly to global emissions, with Indonesia and Vietnam leading in coal consumption. One alarming trend highlighted in the report is the rapid expansion of captive coal power in Indonesia. These off-grid coal plants primarily supply electricity to industries like nickel production, a critical component of electric vehicle batteries. While nickel is essential for the global clean energy transition, the coal-powered smelters used to process it are among the most carbon-intensive energy systems in the world. In 2023, Captive coal capacity in Indonesia reached 10.8 gigawatt, with an additional 14.4 gigawatt planned or under construction. Beyond emissions, the public health consequences are dire. Air pollution from coal plants releases harmful particulates and gases that contribute to respiratory illnesses, cardiovascular diseases, and premature deaths. Analysts warn that if captive coal use continues unchecked, it could result in 27,000 additional deaths in Indonesia by 2040. These numbers are not just statistics. They represent real human lives lost due to short-sighted energy policies. Economically, the risks of fossil fuel dependency are becoming more apparent. As the world transitions to renewables, coal and LNG projects risk becoming stranded assets investments that lose value as demand for fossil fuels declines. For countries like Indonesia and Vietnam, these stranded assets could amount to billions of dollars in wasted capital, diverting funds from renewable energy projects that could drive long-term growth. The financial risks extend beyond stranded assets. Fossil fuel markets are highly volatile, with prices subject to global supply disruptions and geopolitical tensions. By continuing to invest in coal and LNG, Asian countries expose themselves to price shocks that can destabilize economies and increase energy poverty. So, if fossil fuels aren't the answer, what is? The report provides a clear and compelling direction, renewable energy. Asia is home to some of the richest renewable resources globally, sun-drenched landscapes for solar power, consistent wind patterns along coastal and offshore areas, and extensive river systems ideal for hydropower. Together, these resources have the potential to transform the region's energy landscape, drastically reducing emissions while ensuring a reliable, affordable, and sustainable power supply. Yet, these assets remain vastly underutilized. Let's begin with solar energy. The potential here is enormous. Take Indonesia, for instance, which has an estimated solar capacity of 6,750 gigawatt, one of the highest in the world. This vast potential, however, remains largely untapped, as solar accounts for just 0.2% of Indonesia's energy mix as of 2023. This underutilization represents a missed opportunity to leverage a resource that could power homes, industries, and public infrastructure cleanly and affordably. The economics of solar are equally compelling. By 2025, the levelized cost of electricity from solar, when combined with battery storage, is expected to be cheaper than coal. Over the next decade, this cost advantage will widen further, making solar one of the most financially viable options for energy generation. But Indonesia isn't the only country with untapped potential. India, too, has emerged as a major player in solar energy, driven by ambitious government policies and investments. With vast stretches of arid and semi-arid land, India is well-positioned to become a solar superpower. Already, the country has achieved record-breaking solar installations, bringing it closer to its target of 509 gigawatt of non-fossil fuel capacity by 2030. These advancements highlight the transformative impact of strong policy frameworks and private sector participation. Wind energy offers another critical opportunity for Asia. Coastal and offshore regions across the continent, particularly in countries like Vietnam and the Philippines, have consistent wind patterns that are ideal for energy generation. Vietnam, in particular, 
has made significant strides in wind energy deployment, thanks to government incentives and private sector investment. The numbers speak for themselves. By 2026, non-hydro renewables in Vietnam are expected to account for 19% of electricity generation, up from 16% in 2023. These gains demonstrate how supportive policies and investment-friendly environments can rapidly scale renewable energy capacity. Offshore wind projects, like those in Taiwan and South Korea, are also paving the way for high-capacity, stable energy sources that can power cities and industries alike. Hydropower is another crucial component of Asia's renewable energy mix. Countries like Laos, Cambodia, and Bhutan already rely heavily on hydropower, leveraging their extensive river systems to generate consistent and reliable electricity. Hydropower offers unique advantages, particularly combined with intermittent sources like solar and wind. Acting as a stabilizing force, hydropower can provide a steady baseline for electricity generation, reducing the need for fossil fuel-based backup systems during periods of low solar or wind output. Moreover, investments in modernizing existing hydropower infrastructure could further enhance its efficiency and sustainability, ensuring that this resource remains a cornerstone of Asia's energy transition. However, Asia's renewable energy potential extends beyond just solar, wind, and hydropower. Geothermal energy, for example, holds significant promise in countries like Indonesia and the Philippines, which are located along the Pacific Ring of Fire. Geothermal plants provide a stable and reliable energy source, independent of weather conditions making them a valuable addition to the region's renewable portfolio. Similarly, bioenergy, derived from agricultural and forestry waste, can play a supporting role, particularly in rural areas where these materials are abundant. The report makes it clear Asia has the natural resources to transition to renewables. Yet, what's missing is the political will and financial investment to scale these technologies and integrate them into national energy systems. Take grid infrastructure as an example. Many countries in the region still rely on outdated grid systems that struggle to accommodate the variability of renewable energy sources like wind and solar. Modernizing these grids with advanced technologies, such as smart grids and energy storage systems, is essential for ensuring a stable and reliable electricity supply. These upgrades would not only enhance grid efficiency, but also enable cross-border energy trade allowing countries to share renewable resources more effectively. Renewable energy adoption cannot happen without the right policies and infrastructure. The report identifies several critical areas where governments must act. First, policy reform. Governments need to set enforceable targets for renewable energy adoption and coal phase-outs. This includes closing loopholes that allow captive coal plants to continue expanding. For example, Indonesia's 2040 coal phase-out target excludes captive coal plants, creating a critical gap in its climate strategy. Second, infrastructure investment. Modernizing Asia's energy grids is essential for integrating variable renewable energy sources like wind and solar. This includes building smart grids, deploying energy storage systems, and strengthening cross-border interconnections to create a more resilient regional energy market. Third, financial incentives. Transitioning to renewables requires significant upfront investment, but the long-term benefits far outweigh the costs. Governments can encourage private sector participation through subsidies, tax breaks, and public-private partnerships. International financing mechanisms, such as the Just Energy Transition Partnership, can also provide much-needed capital to accelerate renewable deployment. Collaboration is another key to unlocking Asia's energy potential. Initiatives like the RC Yan Power Grid demonstrate the benefits of regional cooperation, enabling countries to share resources and reduce costs. By pooling renewable energy from multiple sources, the grid can provide a stable and reliable electricity supply while minimizing reliance on fossil fuels. Japan, as the leader of AZEC, has a unique role to play. By shifting its focus from LNG and CCS to proven renewable technologies, Japan can set a powerful example for the region. This shift would not only align AZEC with global climate goals, but also strengthen Japan's leadership position in international climate negotiations. Imagine a future where solar farms in Indonesia, wind turbines in Vietnam, 
and hydropower plants in Laos power homes, industries, and public services across Southeast Asia, where cross-border energy trade ensures a stable and affordable electricity supply for all, where clean energy projects create jobs, attract investment, and drive economic growth. This isn't just a vision, it's a real possibility if Asia embraces its renewable energy potential. The report concludes that the path forward is clear. It must prioritize renewables, modernize energy infrastructure, and implement robust policies to phase out fossil fuels. By doing so, Asia can not only meet its climate commitments, but also lead the global transition to a sustainable energy future. Asia Zero Emission Community represents a critical juncture in Asia's energy transition. The decisions made today will shape the region's climate future for decades to come. By prioritizing renewable energy, strengthening policies, and fostering collaboration, AZEC can become a true driver of decarbonization and sustainability. What do you think are the most important steps for Asia to accelerate its clean energy transition? Thank you for tuning into today's episode. If you found this episode insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest in the energy transition. For more in-depth analysis and updates, visit our website at energytracker.asia. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Energy Insights. <music>